if you think that you're miscarrying, it's an absolutely devastating experience. And chances are that you'll be searching on your phone and looking for resources, and this is how you found this video. And I find that a lot of the resources online aren't actually quite helpful. So that's why I thought I'm going to shoot this video for you and just sit with you, hold your hand and share a couple of things that might be helpful to you and answer some of the questions I suspect that you might be having right now. I think it goes without saying, but I'll just have to say it, of course, because I'm right here on a public podium. I have to tell you that if you're worried that something is really wrong with you, for example, you might suspect that you're having an ectopic pregnancy because you're both bleeding and having a lot of pain, then it's really important that you go and seek out a professional and have you checked out. Because I have no x-ray eyes, I cannot see what's going on for you right now, and I can't advise you when there is something that is seriously going on. So this is at your own discretion to decide on. But I know that some of you either are not miscarrying, but you think you might be, and I wanna help you figure that out before you take any drastic steps. And some of you might potentially be miscarrying, but it isn't necessary to go and seek out professional care right away. So what I'm sharing in this video are a couple of, I guess, random things that I have experience on, uh, talking to my patients that think they might be miscarrying, and I'll just share those things in no particular order but I've got them written down here in my bullet journal. I'm gonna share them with you and I hope they're helpful to you. So as I said, if you're doubling over, you are in a lot of pain, you think you might be having an ectopic pregnancy, it's really important that you go and seek professional care right away. Whether it's the middle of the night or not, you need to go and see urgent care because if there is an ectopic pregnancy, that means that the pregnancy is in a fallopian tube and there's a risk of bursting which is a threat to your life, but also to your future fertility because you might lose a fallopian tube or an ovary. It's important to understand though, that although there's a lot of information on ectopic pregnancies online and practitioners will talk a lot about ectopic pregnancies, a very small percentage of pregnancies are in fact an ectopic pregnancy. So while there is a lot of built up fear around this because the risk is quite high of an ectopic pregnancy, you need to remember that it is not as common as it might seem because of the amount of information that is around this online and the emphasis that practitioners are putting on ectopic pregnancies. So I'm guessing that you think you might be miscarrying because you've seen some spotting or some bleeding. It's again really important to know that this is incredibly common to happen. I have a lot of patients that get spotting or bleeding at the beginning of their pregnancies and there's nothing wrong. Some patients even bleed throughout their entire pregnancy and there are lots of different reasons for this. In the very, very beginning, it could be some implantation bleeding, it could be some irritation around the cervix, your uterus is growing, so it's possible that that is a vein that popped somewhere. It is possible that you have mild endometriosis or you have a few fibroids, and none of these things need to be necessarily a big issue. So, if so far you haven't decided to do an ultrasound for the reasons that I talk about in the articles that I'll link down below as well, and that I talked about in a video that is on Patreon right now. So if you haven't seen that video yet, it's all the advice that I give to my pregnant patients and a large part of that video is on ultrasounds and the safety or unsafety of them. Go check that one out if you're interested. But if you've decided to hold off on an early ultrasound, it might not necessarily be the best call to get that ultrasound right now. Knowing that a lot of women bleed in their pregnancy without any issues, you need to weigh out the risk and the benefit of having an ultrasound. So again, I talk about that risk in the articles that I'll link down below and in that Patreon video. I'm not gonna go into that too deeply right now, but if there's nothing wrong with your baby right now and uh, the bleeding has nothing to do with a potential miscarriage, are you sure that you want to expose your baby to the ultrasound? That is the question you need to ask yourself. Because if you go to a practitioner right now because you think you might be miscarried, they will offer you an ultrasound right away because it is completely normal these days to have an ultrasound to offer it. And it is abnormal to refuse it. Before you go into that complete roller coaster, you need to decide for yourself, what do I want? Besides weighing out the risk of an ultrasound, if there is a live baby in there and there's nothing wrong, you also need to think about the benefits or the potential benefits of an ultrasound. 
what would the outcome of an ultrasound bring you? Is it only about peace of mind, which is really understandable that you wanna have that? Is the baby okay? Is the baby not okay? And am I indeed miscarrying? Or do you expect that if you have that ultrasound, that they can actually do something to prevent the miscarrying? And the answer to that is no. If you are in your first trimester and you are bleeding and then with an ultrasound, they see that, they're mis that you're miscarrying, there is nothing that they can do about it. The only thing they will probably do is give you medication to help you get rid of the miscarriage a lot quicker or offer that at least, or they will suggest a DNC. So again, you're going into this medical roller coaster that you might not want to be in just yet. Remember that as soon as a practitioner has your case in their hands, they need to weigh out the risks constantly. The risk of you having a routine placenta, the risk of you having an ectopic pregnancy, and they will always choose to reduce that risk as much as they can. So any side effects from medication, any scarring that you might have following a DNC or any trauma to your uterus, having implications for your fertility in the future, these are things that are not on their minds. And that's understandable because that's not what they're trained to do. So if you know that bleeding is common for a lot of pregnancies, doesn't necessarily mean a miscarriage. You also know that there is a risk for ultrasounds for your little fetus if it is still fine and there's no benefit to the ultrasound except for when there is a potential ectopic pregnancy and that needs to be taken care of right away to preserve your life, then this might put you in a position that you wanna stay at home and just see and wait what happens. There could be another reason that you might be bleeding though and could be that you have low progesterone. If you know that you already have low progesterone in your regular cycle, so you know you're at risk of having low progesterone, so the bleeding could have to do with that. In that case, there might not be anything wrong with your baby, but your hormones are low, in which case you're going to want to supplement with progesterone. So it's important that you get blood tests done ASAP, and if the blood test shows that your progesterone is low, that you do supplement with progesterone that is prescribed to you by your practitioner. Yes, we can do things about this homeopathically, but I can't give you a one size fits all solution over this video. So in that case, seeing that you are pregnant and there is a baby in there, your best shot is to get the progesterone suppositories or any other form of supplementation that's offered to you. Another way that you can spot if maybe you are or you aren't miscarrying is if you have been charting and you've continued to chart. If your temperatures are still nice and up, then it isn't a progesterone issue why you are spotting or bleeding right now. Yes, you could still be miscarrying and it could be a missed miscarriage, but so far there isn't anything wrong with your hormones most likely. So that's an interesting one to keep in mind. If on the other hand, your temperature has plummeted, then it is possible that you are either miscarrying or that you have low progesterone and you need to be supplemented with that. I would suggest that the best course of action then would be to either get your blood tests checked for HCG and for progesterone because that will give you the information if you need to supplement with progesterone or not, if you're miscarrying or you're not miscarrying. And then you can always decide to have an ultrasound after all if the results of those tests doesn't give you the right information to make a good decision. And then of course you can opt for the ultrasound remedies that I talk about in that Patreon video, but also in the articles on ultrasounds to take before and after your scan if you end up deciding that a scan is the best way to go for you right now. I know that bleeding and spotting isn't the only reason that you might think that you're miscarrying. Some of you might actually be having full on contractions in which case there is a homeopathic remedy I can recommend to you and it's called Viburnum and you would need to take it in a 200C. I will write it in the description down below. Of course, if it's the middle of the night for you, you don't really have a homeopathic pharmacy nearby to get your hands on this remedy, it's gonna be tricky for you to get this remedy. But for those of you that it's in the day and you're able to order something or you're able to get your hands on something from a kit or a friend that has homeopathic remedies or like a pharmacy that's close by, Viburnum 200C is the way to go. And if you're watching this video because you've had a miscarriage in the past and you want to educate yourself for the future, then Viburnum is the one to get if your miscarriages have always started with violent uh, contractions even before you were getting spotting or bleeding. 
You can put this pill in water and sip it throughout the day and continue sipping it until your contractions subside. If the reason for your miscarriages or your current miscarriage is because, because you have what is called an irritable uterus and that is what is causing the contractions, but there's nothing wrong with your hormones, there's nothing wrong with the baby, then viburnum can save your baby, can save your pregnancy. If you're interested in that video in which I talk about the ultrasounds, go check it out on Patreon. And if you want to learn more about what you can do if you are indeed suffering with a miscarriage and how you can deal with the aftermath, then go and check out the playlist that I've got for you, which is all about handling pregnancy loss. I'm sending a big, big hug to you. I'm hoping that everything's going to be fine. For those of you that it's not going to be fine, take your time, rest, and give yourself a chance to mourn.